special treat for y'all today. How many of you remember who um, Harold Perry is or was? He was a tremendously popular personality on the radio and he played the Great Gildersleeve who was funny, oh so funny. And the Great Gildersleeve character started on Fibber Be Mickey and Molly and he was so popular he branched off into his own show. Now he also did some special records during the, the 1940s and I have one of them. It's a uh, children's stories as told by the Great Gildersleeve with original music by Robert Emmett Dolan. And it's 478 RPMs and they feature uh, two children's stories, The Brave Little Toaster and Hansel and Gretel. Now, I think it, here's, here's a picture of Harold Perry. I think this is absolutely wonderful. Now, I got this from my friends over there at Records and Tapes Galore here in Saginaw, Michigan, Bill and Judy Wagner who I, you know, thank you so much. I love you guys. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna play for you today the story of Hansel and Gretel by Harold, as told by Harold Perry. And I'll save the Brave Little Toaster for the next time, or Brave Little Taylor, excuse me, for the next time. And this particular set was released, I saw the date on here someplace, but it was 1948 that it came out and children were totally captivated by it. And as you hear his voice, and, and as he tells the story of Hansel and Gretel, you'll see why. Now, the discs themselves, um, each one is cracked. But with 78 RPM records, you can, you can still play them. Now, on part three, um, it's in four parts, because there's four records all presented here today. But in part three, you'll hear some skipping at the beginning, but that'll pass. Uh, I think it's worth listening to you. I think you'll enjoy it. And if you got little kids and you want to show them something from the, or for the golden era of radio, this would be a great one for them. So much more entertaining than the crap that's thrown at kids today. All right, uh, let's get to it, and I'll be back with you after the uh, after the program. <laughs> Did you ever hear the story of Hansel and Gretel? Well, this is it. Hansel was a little boy and Gretel was a sister. And they lived with their father and stepmother in a tiny cottage near a wood. The father made his living cutting firewood for people. And the stepmother, well, she spent her time doing housework and complaining and being mean to Hansel and Gretel. There wasn't much money in the wood business. And when one year nothing came up in the family garden but radishes, and the chickens got so hungry they quit laying eggs, there just wasn't enough food to keep the family going. So one night, the woodcutter's wife came to bed in her curl papers and said to her husband, Listen, dear, there isn't enough food for us and those two children of yours. Take them out to the woods tomorrow and lose them, or we'll all starve to death. No, honey, that's no way to talk, the woodcutter said. You see, he loved his children. But his wife was one of those women that just won't give up an idea, and she nagged away at him till he finally gave up. The next day, he took Hansel and Gretel way, way into the forest, miles from home, and sneaked away and left them there to starve. He felt pretty bad about it, but he did it. But fortunately, the scheme didn't work. Hansel was a pretty smart little boy, and he'd overheard his father and stepmother talking. So he filled his pockets with white pebbles and dropped them along the way into the woods. When the moon came out, the pebbles sparkled so brightly, the children were able to find their way home with no trouble at all. The father was overjoyed to see them, but the stepmother wouldn't give up. The next night, she nagged and whined at her husband again. It's them or me, dear, she kept saying. And the poor woodcutter finally agreed, just so he could get some sleep. When Hansel overheard this and tried to creep out and get some more pebbles, he found his stepmother had locked the door. So when they started off the next day, he had nothing to leave along the way but some crumbs of bread she had given him for lunch, thinking, of course, it would be his last. And sure enough, Hansel's breadcrumbs didn't work out so well. When the moon came out and the children began to look for the path, they discovered some birds had eaten all the crumbs. So there they were, no path to take them home. Just big black trees, with owls sitting around in them, hooting in the moonlight. Gretel began to cry. Oh, Hansel, she said, we'll never find our way home. We're lost in the woods. The wild animals will eat us. Now, Gretel, buck up, said Hansel. You're a big girl. The thing to do is to go to sleep under some leaves, and in the morning everything will be all right. 
so Gretel dried her eyes and got busy helping to fix a nice bed of leaves. And before you could say F soon, <laughs> the two children were fast asleep. When Hansel and Gretel woke up, the sun was shining, and the world looked a great deal brighter than it had the night before. So after a breakfast of roots and berries, they started off quite cheerfully, looking for a path that would take them back home. They walked and walked, but nothing seemed to lead anywhere. And finally, late in the afternoon, they found themselves right back where they'd started, with their bed of leaves still lying there under the tree. Discouraging, wasn't it? You see, this was before the days of Boy Scouts or Campfire Girls, so Hansel and Gretel didn't know how to tell directions by the sun. And they spent the next two days wandering around in the wood, getting nowhere at all. And all the time they were getting hungrier and hungrier, since they had nothing to eat but roots and berries. Maybe you've heard about how easy it is to live on roots and berries if you're lost in the woods. Well, don't you believe it. On the morning of the third day, Hansel and Gretel were sitting under a tree, wondering what to do next, when suddenly a beautiful white bird lit on a branch above their heads and began to sing. And as the white bird sang, the children began to feel better. They didn't feel tired or discouraged or even hungry anymore. When the bird finished his song, he circled above them for a moment and then flew slowly away, almost as if he were telling them to follow. And they did. They followed till they came to an open space, very sunny and cheerful, with a little cottage standing right in the middle of it. The white bird lit on the roof and the children went up closer. Hansel, said Gretel, do you see what I see? The whole house is made of cake. Careful, said Hansel, this may be a trap. But he broke off a little piece of the roof and popped it into his mouth. Mmm, delicious, he said, with his mouth full. The best roof I ever ate in my life. Have some. But Gretel preferred to knock out a piece of one of the window panes, which were clear sugar. They were munching away, making up for three days of roots and berries, when the cottage door opened, and out came an old, old lady. Hansel and Gretel were so frightened they almost dropped what they were eating. But the old lady smiled and said, Ah, oh, you dear children, what has brought you here? Come in and stay with me, and no harm shall befall you. And she led them inside, and gave them a wonderful supper. Pancakes and syrup, and nuts and apples, and two glasses of milk apiece. Then she showed them a room at the back of the house with two little white beds in it, all made up. Well, camping is all right, but a bed is better than a pile of leaves any day. And in a few minutes, Hansel and Gretel fell asleep, never dreaming that the kind old lady was really a terrible witch who loved to eat little boys and girls. Now I've got witches anyways. I didn't have any of them. Well, they were terrible. I imagine the old of Hansel and like all the other witches. And they far. Long oh, and they boy they like long before they were old witch and cake on purpose. Little children. You could catch them and eat them. And early the next toad into their room while they were still asleep and grabbed Hansel and dragged him out to a little wooden cage she had in the backyard and locked him up. Then she went back and yanked poor Gretel out of bed. Get up, you lazy thing. There's cooking to be done. I'm going to fatten up your brother for a few days and then eat him. Well, there was nothing Gretel could do but obey orders. So from that, fetching water from the well, sweeping, washing dishes, shelling peas, and getting nothing to eat but leftovers, while Hansel was kept locked up in his cage with nothing to do but eat, and plenty of that. Every morning the witch would come out in the yard and say to Hansel, Stretch out your fingers, son, so as I can feel if you're getting fat. But Hansel, I told you he was smart, didn't I? Hansel was in no hurry to be eaten up by the old witch, so he searched around the cage and found an old chicken bone, left there by some unlucky little boy who'd been there before and he stretched out the chicken bone instead of his finger. The witch, who was nearsighted, remember, felt the chicken bone every morning, and she couldn't understand why Hansel didn't seem to be fattening up. <laughs> and after about a month, she couldn't stand it any longer. Fat or lean, I'm going to eat that boy for supper tonight, she said. And she sent Gretel for a bucket of water to boil her brother in. Poor Gretel. She cried and cried. 
But the witch only screamed at her to stop the noise. Yep, I think I'll put Hansel in the pine. I've got the dough all rolled out here. So as soon as the oven is hot, I'll bake my crust. And she made Gretel run back and forth from the stove to the wood pile, till the fire under the oven was roaring. When the oven was practically red hot, the witch said to Gretel, Crawl in the oven there, my girl, and see if it's hot enough for pie crust. Well, anyone could see the oven was hot without crawling into it. And Gretel quickly understood that the witch was planning to push her in and bake her, so she could have the fun of eating both children at once. Now, I told you Hansel was smart, but he didn't have all the brains in the family, not by a long shot. So when the witch asked Gretel to stick her head in the oven, she pretended not to understand. I'm sorry. What is it you want me to do, she asked. Crawl in the oven, you stupid girl. But how, asked Gretel. Like this, you ninny, said the witch. And she crawled up and put her head in the oven. And that's where she made her big mistake. Because the minute her head was in, Gretel gave her a push that shoved her the rest of the way, then slammed the iron door and pulled it. <laughs> how the old witch howled. But Gretel ran away and let her burn to ashes. Well, you can imagine how glad Hansel was when Gretel came and let him out of the cage. And when she told him how she'd taken care of the witch, Hansel felt as proud as if he'd done it himself. In fact, he said so. I couldn't have done any better myself, sis, he said, which made Gretel very happy. Uh, witches, by the way, were considered such a pest that if you were lucky enough to kill one, you were entitled to grab anything you found lying around her house. So when Hansel and Gretel found a huge pile of precious stones hidden in the kitchen cupboard, Hansel filled his pockets and Gretel filled her apron. And it was all perfectly right and proper. If we could only find our way home now, how happy we would be, the children thought. Just then they heard the sound of wings. And when they looked up, there was the beautiful white bird circling above their heads and singing. And when he flew slowly off, they knew he must be taking them where they wanted to go. Sure enough, the white bird took them straight home. And I wish you could have seen the look on their father's face when they walked in the door. He hadn't had a happy moment since the day he'd left the children in the forest. And here they were, safe and sound. Also, his wife had fallen down a well and broken her neck the week before, so all his troubles were over. They uh, sold the precious stones to a king who lived in the neighborhood and used the money to build a modest little house in which they lived happily forever after. Harold Perry, gosh, he was, he was awesome. And I hope that you enjoyed taking a listen to this classic, and I do believe it's classic, that word gets overused a lot but this my dear friends is a classic all right so uh, i'll be with you again soon with the brave little taylor i hope you enjoyed this i love each and every one of you don't ever forget it on the other side of that monitor god bless you and i'll see you again real real soon hasta la vista baby